Have you ever wondered what a plus one or a plus two does to your weapon damage? Welcome back to Dawson Dice, this is Mathematically Correct, Enchantments Explained. Let's look at level thresholds. For enchantments, we've got plus one, plus two, and plus three, which will affect both the attack roll and the damage roll of your weapon. The ability modifier is plus three, plus four, and plus five, and although these can be lower or higher, we're going to be looking at three, four, and five, because that's the average player. We've got attack roll and damage roll affected by the ability modifier. And finally, we've got the proficiency bonus of plus two, plus three, and plus four, and these will affect only the attack roll. When you put it into a table, you can see that there are certain level thresholds. For example, level three, you get enchantment. Level four, you get an ASI, which will increase your ability modifier. Or level five, you increase your proficiency bonus. These level thresholds are key and will be talked about later in the video. Let's have a closer look at the hit chance. The extra chance to hit can be calculated by taking the ability modifier, proficiency bonus, and the enchantment level. Therefore, for level one, you have a plus three, a plus two, and a plus zero, giving you plus five overall. This is 25% overall, from 15%, 10%, and 0%, just multiplying these numbers by five. Then you can fill in the rest of the table, and the overall is slowly increasing from level one to level 12. For level 12, for example, you get a 12 by adding five, plus four, plus three, giving you 60% overall. Interestingly, at level three, this is the enchantment threshold. As you see, going from level two to three, there is no change in ability modifier or proficiency bonus, but there is a plus one in enchantment, going from plus five to plus six for your extra chance to hit. We therefore need to get the overall chance to hit, which is from the base chance to hit plus the extra chance to hit. Level one, for example, the enemy's AC on average is 13, giving you a 40% base chance to hit. Adding on the 25% gives you 65% overall. You can then fill in the rest of the table using the enemy's AC, and the previously calculated extra chances to hit from the table before. Level 12 is a slight difference where it's minus 5% but it's just treated as a minus 5, going from 60% down to 55%. Until now we've just been considering normal attacks, so at level 1 you've got a 65% chance to hit. With an advantage attack however you would have a 91% chance to hit. You can take away the chance normally and the chance without an enchantment to get the difference Populating the full table for all 12 levels, you can see that of course normal attacks have a lower chance to hit than the advantage attacks, but the difference increases faster for a normal attack than an advantage attack. So overall advantage attack would actually have less difference if you had no enchantment compared to if you had a normal attack with no enchantment. This being said, it is of course better to have the enchantment on an advantage attack because you're just going to do more damage overall, but the difference is a little bit less. Going forward, I'll be using these numbers in the calculations. Now let's get into the damage calculations. On the right hand side you can see the weapon damage on average for a 1d4 all the way to a 2d6. 2.5 all the way to 7. Slotting these damage numbers in, we can find out the average damage per hit by taking the weapon damage, times it out by 2, and the crit chance of 5. The 2 is to take into account that you deal double damage on a crit. Then you add on the weapon times the normal hit chance percent, plus the ability modifier, plus the enchantment, times the overall percentage. Now what do I mean by this? The normal hit percentage is the overall hit percentage minus your crit chance. Here it will be 5%, however if you're using advantage it will be 9.75% crit. This gets us the normal hit, just a normal damage without any crit, the overall, which is every single time you swing, and the crit chance. Crit chance will be here, shown as 10% because it's easier to say, easier to see, but it will actually be calculated with the 9.75 in mind. For example, at level 1, a 1d4 normal attack will do a 65% minus 5%, giving a 60% normal, 5% crit, and the overall of 65%. The damage therefore is 2.5 times 2 times 5%, plus 2.5 times 60%, plus the 3 plus 0, that's coming from the enchantment and ability modifier. You then multiply the enchantment and ability modifier by the overall percentage, and that gets us 3.7 damage per attack. For an advantage one, for example, we have the 91% minus the 10%, which gets us 81%. Slotting that in, you can get 5.2 damage per attack. As with everything in this video, we're going to do it at all levels 1 through 12, so the next slide has a lot of numbers on it, but don't worry about it, I'll simplify it down. You can see level 1 through 12 at all the damages for all the different weapons on average. Now this is a no enchantment, so this is the normal baseline, assuming that you don't have any enchanted weapons throughout the entire game, which would be quite sad. You can see that the baseline slowly decreases over time. Then when you take into account enchantments, you see the damage increases and that the damage overall is increasing over time. You can then take the difference between these two numbers 
which is a lot easier to see than all the other numbers. You can see that 2d6 is always on top, as expected, and 1d4 is always on bottom, also as expected. At level 1 and 2, there is no difference in damage because we haven't had an enchantment yet. However, at level 3, which is our first enchantment level, we have 0.9, 1, 1, 1.1, 1 .1, 1 1.1 and 1.2 additional damage for each of the weapons, respectively. It wasn't only level 3 that had an enchantment threshold, but it was the first one and it gave you enchantment plus 1. Level 7 gives you enchantment plus 2, and finally, enchantment plus 3 comes from level 10. Something to note is level 2 to 3 doesn't have a change in ability modifier and proficiency bonus, as mentioned before, but level 6 to 7 and 9 to 10 follow this exact same trend, while still increasing the enchantment level by 1. So therefore, 2 to 3, 6 to 7, and 9 to 10 are actually really important levels for looking at enchantment world. So then, what's the answer? Well, shown on the right is the entire table of all the damage differences, for a normal attack with no enchantment, and a normal attack with enchantment. Of course, level 1 and 2 have zero damage, because you haven't had an enchantment yet. Level 3, which is the level 2 to 3 difference, is an increase of 0.93 for a 1d4 weapon, and you can see the rest of the weapons respectively. Interestingly, 6 to 7 follows the exact same numbers, exact same pattern as 2 to 3. However, this deviates when you go from 9 to 10, as it goes up by 0 0.04 damage or 0 0.05 damage on average. The answer changes very slightly when looking at the advantage answer. So as you can see, there is no longer this duality between 2 and 3 and 6 to 7, and why I cannot figure out. If you have a suggestion of why there's no similarity between 2 and 3 and 6 to 7 as there was when there was a normal answer, I would really like to know. I couldn't figure it out, and would love to discuss it in the comments. However, as expected, advantage has higher damage, and as you go to later levels and larger weapons, the damage increases proportionally. Overall, this is easier to see when comparing normal and advantage side by side. The conclusions overall are that damage increase is, of course, level dependent. The later levels are more impactful than the earlier levels. Later enchants are more impactful. And high damage weapons benefit more. Do you have any further conclusions that you could draw from this? Hit me up in the comments. We have a discussion down there after every video, and I'd love to hear what you think. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Bye bye. If you've made it this far, it likely means that you've seen my videos before or are a subscriber, so thank you very much. I'm really sorry for the delay in uploads, but I've been really ill recently, and now that I've finished my degree, I've been really busy getting ready for graduation. Now that I have my last summer break, I'm going to be using it to make a lot more of these videos, but I need your help. What do you want to see going forward? I can't promise that I'll do every suggestion, but any ideas are welcome and discussion of those ideas as well. If you don't want to comment, you can always reach me on the Doors and Dice Discord linked in the description, but all comments, shares, or even likes really help these videos spread to other min-maxers. If you really didn't fall asleep mid-video, you're probably a min-maxer, so any help will help me min-max going forward and is greatly appreciated. If you really have made it this far, end any of your comments with a unicorn emoji and I'll know who the real min-maxers are. It's the national animal of Scotland, we gotta take pride where we can. So a special thank you if you've made it this far, I hope your week was wonderful, see you soon, bye bye.